For this CEM calculation video, we're going to cover financial analysis. We're going to cover four problems, a finance payment problem, net present value calculation, an after-tax cash flow, and calculating internal rate of return, or IRR. The finance payment problem is you're financing a $400,000 energy project at 5% for a 15-year term. What's the annual payment? Here you're going to use the financial tables, and they can be found starting on page 69 of Doty and Turner. And you're going to be looking at the column Find A Given P, because A is an annuity, which uh, these kind of payments are, because you pay them every year. And you're going to look, um, given P, P is $400,000, because that's the present value of what um, you are um, financing. And then you just go down 15 years once you find the, uh, the 5% table. And when you do that, you find that um, the value is 0 0.09634, and you just multiply that um, by P, which is 400000 to get your annual payment of $38,536. So up next is the uh, net present value problem. And in this case, a boiler retrofit costs $700,000. After the retrofit's completed, there will be an additional annual maintenance expense of $20,000, and the energy savings from the retrofit is $140,000 per year. If we assume the boiler will operate for 15 years, um, with negligible salvage value. And we're also assuming a discount rate of 10%, and we're using end of year cash flows. What's the net present value? So, first off, um, the present value of, the boiler, of purchasing the boiler is negative, this is important, it's negative $700,000. And then to figure out the present value of the savings, you have to take the savings and subtract the additional maintenance expense, and then you're looking in the um, financial tables to find P given A, because this is an annuity, right? The savings occur every single year for 15 years, and you look at the 10% um, table, and you find that the value, the factor is 7.60608. Once you do that calculation, the net present value is $212, or $212,729.60. So the other sort of wrinkle in this question could be, um, would you go through um, with this project? Because the net present value is positive here, um, and you're taking into account all of the, um, the, the, the different cash flows, you would go through with this project. So let's look at the after-tax cash flow problem. In this case, it's actually the same exact problem, except um, we're assuming a tax rate of 28%, and we're assuming straight-line depreciation. Um, and we're just looking for after-tax cash flow. So if we're just looking for cash flow, just so, so we're clear, we don't need to use the discount rate when we're looking for cash flow. That's only when we're calculating present values or net present value. So there's two things, remember, that you need to take into account. That your straight-line depreciation is basically a tax savings, and then you're taxed on your um, energy savings, and that's actually a tax hit. So... Um, the savings is, first you calculate how much your equipment depreciates in a year by taking one over the year times the equipment cost. Um, and then, so it's about $47,000 a year. And then you multiply that by your tax rate. And so that's the savings. So that's the $13,000 savings about in your annual cash flow. But you get taxed for the $120,000 of savings every year. So, and that gives basically a net negative of taking the tax rate multiplying by the 120,000 of 33,600. So, you're save you're still saving the $120,000 every year, but you're taking a hit of the 33,600 from the um, from paying taxes on that and you're um, getting a benefit from the depreciation which is about this 13,000. So, you go from $120,000 in savings before taxes to $99,467 about in savings after taxes. Now let's look at um, internal rate of return, or IRR. So I guess I really like this problem here. Same problem, and now we're trying to figure out what the IRR of the retrofit is. So when we're trying to calculate this, too, the IRR does not depend on the discount rate. The only reason that how IRR and discount rate are related is that if you find an IRR that's greater than the discount rate, you would go through with the project. If you find that an IRR is less than the discount rate, you would not go through with the project. So 
the big thing to remember about IRR is it's the value of the discount rate when the net present value is zero. So the problem is, though, we don't know. IRR is a rate. It's basically a discount rate, right? So we don't know which table to use um, and where to get the factor from. Um, but we know something that we don't usually know, which is that the net present, what the net present value is, and that it equals zero. So what we say is, so sort of looking back in, you know, when we calculate the net present value, now we work backwards. Here we have a net present value of zero. We have our initial $700,000 cost. We have our savings of $120,000 a year. And then here we're multiplying by a factor. We don't know what the factor is. So in this case, we solve for that factor. And the factor should be, to give an MPV of zero, it should be 5.833. So now what we do is basically we guess, we look at different tables with different discount rates, and we see which table has a value closest to 5.833. So if we look through the tables, the closest um, is the 15% table um, that gives us a value close to 5.833 for the fine P given A um, after 15 years. So 15% so is our IRR. And in this case, same same deal, the 15% is greater than the discount rate of 10%, so we would go through um, with this project. So we get the same um, decision as we did when we calculate the net present value. So those are all the financial problems. Thanks for watching.